Good morning, everyone. Let's uh, begin our moment of worship this morning. And I'm going to invite you to stand, please. Amen. I'm going I'm to be reading uh, these words written by the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Um, if you want to know how much God truly loves us, those, uh, those words are, are written here by the Apostle John. Listen to these words. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. 
And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what, what we will be has not yet been made, made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And who has his hope in him? And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Amen. Thank you, God, for, for your love. Your love, Lord God, which rains down on us every moment, every day of our lives. And God, we're just so grateful, God, for all the wonderful things you have done in our lives and in the life of this church. We gather here today to glorify and to honor your great name. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
seated. I love those words, Hosanna in the highest. We, I, I'm telling you, we are living in times unlike no other. I mean, and those of you who are possibly as old as me, as you look back over your lives, don't you see how the world has just changed? And it's changing for the worst. I mean, gosh, you know, you look around and all the wars and the economy and just everything. And, and you know, it fits right into what the Bible says. It says things are going to get worse and worse until Jesus comes. And, uh, and you know, I, but I love reminding people that as, as bad as the world is, God is still on the throne. And, and I'm always, you know, wanting to tell people that, you know, that against the backdrop of everything, God is on the throne. He has always been on the throne. He always will be on the throne. Nobody can dethrone God. He's just always there. One of these days, he's going to take the world back. You just watch. He is. You watch. When he sends his son, it all turns around. So uh, I want to welcome you all to Annadale. I want to welcome those who are joining us online. And uh, it's so good to see everybody. I don't have a whole lot of announcements, but uh, I do want to clue you in on just a couple things that are happening the third weekend in November. Uh, first of all, our food giveaway has been switched from the fourth weekend to the third weekend. So the food giveaway will actually be on the 18th. So uh, that's the third Saturday. Otherwise, it's going to conflict with Thanksgiving. So we moved it up a week. And also, you're going to want to know that on November 19th, we are celebrating 65 years as a church. Annadale is 65 years old. So we're going to have a celebration on November 19th. It's going to be a free lunch across the way. So you won't want to miss it. Be prepared for that. Let's continue to worship God with our hearts. Just pray that God softens your heart. And uh, maybe it's time to just just kind of step away from the burdens and the problems that may be weighing on you. And let's just have this be a time when we open our arms to the Lord and pray that he will intervene in our own personal situations and what you and I need the Lord for most right now in our lives. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Greg. Uh, please stand. You know, I opened up this service uh, with a beautiful uh, passage from 1 John. It talks about the God's love that he lavishes upon us. Another thing that the love of God does, the love, the perfect love of God casts out all fear. So let's sing about that right now as we stand in God's love. Sorrow tries to steal the joy I owe. 
And let's continue to worship our God through our tithes, through our offerings. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this hour in which we can uh, return our thanks to you for your material blessings in our lives. We thank you that all the money that we have is really yours, and you only ask for 10%. And we just thank you, God, that we have this opportunity to, to, uh, to share of our finances with uh, your house, the church, and for its outreaches and for all that it does in the community and in the world. So we pray that you'd bless our offering that it would uh, achieve the, that it would go, you know, with the purposes that you have and that it would accomplish uh, what, what our church um, does with this money. And so I just pray that you would bless each giver as we give out of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord for our children and our young people. We just want to continue to pray for them, not only here, but in your time of prayer that the Lord will uh, shield of uh, protection over them. And at this moment, I'm going to have the children come up and the uh, instructors, the teachers, and we're going to have a word of prayer for them as well as our youth. You would just stretch your hand towards the children and the teachers. Let's thank the Lord for them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this moment that our children are able to go to their class. And we just pray, Father, their little hearts would be touched by your Holy Spirit as they learn, as they are being taught by the instructors, the teachers, Lord, that that you would also guide them. And we pray, Father, for them, not only here, but in our own time of prayer, that, that you would protect them. We also pray for our youth. We thank you for the youth that you've given us. We pray, Father, for the leaders, the youth leaders, and we pray, Father, that you would also just protect them at the time at school and, and everything, Father, that they will always remember that you love them. We just thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to go to the Word of God, and I always uh, claim, you know, uh, God's Word when I preach. Uh, when Paul, you know, came to Corinth, and, you know, he said, I, I'm not here to debate, I'm not here to show you my oratorical, you know, skills of oratory or, or of speaking, or I don't want you to be wowed by that. He said, I come to you in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the Word of God. Amen? I come to bring the Word of God to you. You know, everybody, what? What? You know, we want to... Because they were always fascinated by orators and, and people who had come to the square, town square, and they loved to listen to the skills of speaking. And Paul said, I'm not coming with that kind of fancy talking. I come to you with God's Word and in the power of the Holy Spirit, I come. So that's what I always pray every time I preach, every time I teach. I say, Lord, may uh, you be powerful in the Word of God. Not me, but you 
be exalted. Father, bless your word this morning, Father. I pray that you would set our souls afire, Father, our lives afire, our hearts afire, not from emotionalism, Lord, not from the world's uh, power, Lord, but from your power, Lord. May that spark begin with me and may that fire burn in my heart that others that live in darkness that are headed for a Christless eternity see the light of Christ in and through my life for your honor, for your glory, for your praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And uh, I wanted to share with you the hymn you know, that, that I grew up as a child. You know, we prayed for the children. We prayed for our children and youth. They're under attack. But um, this is what I heard in the Baptist church. Uh, the first week that I was born, they took me to the nursery. And the Word of God, the Word of God has been there. The hymns, look at this. Uh, Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me. Let thy voice be heard. Millions grope in darkness. In this day and hour, I will be a witness. Fill me with thy power. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Amen. Father, speak to us again, powerfully, greatly, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this morning, if you have your outline there, you know, we're talking about uh, set my soul afire. You know, I'm amazed that people that walk out of worship services, walk, walk out of uh, the church's meeting, and they don't have a clue what was said or heard or, what, or whatever, you know. They, and, you know, uh, that's sad because uh, uh, sometimes we miss out on not concentrating on the Word of God. We mo concentrate more on the man that is speaking on other people that are around us, on the beans that are cooking on the stove or in the crock pot that are probably right now burning. So when you get home, you'll, you'll smell the, the smell of beans, uh, burned beans, you know, you know how that is. But anyway, uh, you know, their focus is not what? On the Word of God. It's not on the Lord. And when they go away, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what the, what the preacher said, I don't know what the... And, and if there's anything, I hope you, you'll go away saying, it was on set my soul afire. Set my soul, a, uh, set my heart on fire, Lord. My soul afire. Remember what the pastor, I just remember him saying this. The big idea, the big idea is what the preacher, the pastor, uh, you know, wants to walk away from. I have... Uh, books on expository preaching and so forth and so on. And what does that mean? That means the Word of God. That means the preaching is God's Word. So if I give you too much of God's Word, that's what I'm here to do, not my opinion. But here's what the Word of God says in Luke chapter 24, 13. If you have your Bible there, turn with me to Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 34. The walk to a mouse, it says here, Beginning with verse 13, New Living Translation. You know, there's many versions, but what I always say here, what version should I get, Pastor? The version you put into practice. Walk around with big Bible, whatever version, and, but we want you to put the Word of God into practice. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking from the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. They were going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they walked along, and as they walked along, they were talking, they were discussing, they were, you know, having a conversation, everything that had happened. What happened? J 
Jesus just was crucified on Friday, placed in the tomb. On the third day, he rose. He rose. So everything was fresh. Everything was on their minds. What had happened. They were talking about that. You know, oh my gosh. You know, they crucified Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. You know, as, as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. <laughs> and guess who was walking next to him? Jesus. But God kept them from recognizing him. The Lord didn't allow them to see who he was right there in, in the physical. He asked them, Jesus is asking him, what are you discussing? They're walking. Hey, what are you discussing as they continued walking? You know, so they uh, intently, uh, as you are walking along right here, what are you discussing so intently as you're walking along here? And they stopped short and, and sadness. They looked at the guy, or well, Jesus, they looked. And sadness, see the emotion there. Discouragement, let down. Their dreams have been shattered. Their hopes have now flown away. Because they thought, what, Jesus, the Messiah, you know, what, oh, I guess he wasn't the, maybe he wasn't the Messiah and, and, you know, because where are his horses? Where, is, where are his army that they were going to come and defeat the Romans that were oppressing the Jews and oppressing many nations? Where, where's the Messiah that we had in our minds and, we, and our many Jews and, and Israelites were waiting for the one that would come in a horse with the great army to defeat Rome? No, this Jesus was born in a manger, died on, uh, you know, with shame on a cross, put in a tomb. But the Lord appears, as it says there, and, and I always love the Lord. He's always surprising people right there. And he continues on here, uh, the word of God, as, as, uh, and they d discuss, but they, God kept them from recognizing him, and he Ask them, what are you discussing? So, and they stop short sadness uh, across their faces. Here it is, you know, they're devastated. And then verse 18, then one of them, Cle Cleopas, replied, it only mentions the name of one of these two individuals, these two men. You must be the only person in Jerusalem. Where have you been? You know, kind of a thing. <laughs> Haven't you heard? Who hasn't heard about all the things that happened uh, have happened there the last few days, and Jesus probably was going, yeah, I, would, I think I, I know what, <laughs> you know, how I was the center of it. Anyway, but what things, Jesus asked, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from uh, Nazareth, they said, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God, all the people, of all the people. But our leading priests and religious leaders Religion handed him over to be condemned and they crucified him. We hoped he was a Messiah. We had hoped he was a Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This is, uh, all happened three days ago. Then some women from our, our, our group of followers of Jesus were at the tomb early in the morning. And they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. They had seen uh, angels who told Jesus is alive. Here's the women that said there's an empty tomb. Here are angels saying there's an empty tomb. He's no longer there. <laughs> All these evidence that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see. And sure enough, his body was gone. Third evidence. Some men went to see. Let's go out there. I don't know if we could trust the women's opinion. And they came back saying, Hey, yeah, he is gone. Sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Three evidences there that Jesus what, was alive. Hello, what happened? Then Jesus said to them, You foolish. Here's the Lord talking pretty harshly, huh? Rebuking them. Um, you know, correct? You foolish people. 
foolish men. You find it so hard to believe that all the prophets, all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures, what were the, the Old Testament? You've had it here uh, for a long time and all written there. The Bible's there. They didn't have the Old Testament yet. Now we have the old, old and new 66 books. What's our excuse? Wasn't it, look at verse 26, wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer? Uh, no, no, they never taught us about suffering, pain, all the, oh, you know. How many of you that have been Christ, are, are Christians for a while, you've realized that when you're a follower of Christ, you're not, you are not exempt from pain, from suffering, from death. No. It's part of the journey as a believer. I never knew that. I, didn't, I don't want... You know, then you are not reading the Word of God. There's pain, suffering, trials, tribulations. Uh, Peter said that. Um, James said that. Jesus said that. <laughs> if you're going to follow me, people are going to hate you. People are going to talk about... And then verse 20 said, wasn't it clearly predicted here that he was going to suffer? You know, the Jews didn't want to hear that. No, 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 no suffering. We, our, our Messiah is not going to, our Messiah is going to ride in on horses, defeat the, 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 the Romans, and we're going to live happily ever after. No. All these things were already, in verse 20, by this time they were nearing the mouse. At the end of the journey, Jesus acted as if, as if he were going on. They say, okay, here, you guys are, are here now in the city. I'm going to, no, no, hey, why don't you stay with us? See, that was a custom in that day and age. Verse 29, they begged him, stay the night with us. Since it was getting late. So he went into the home with them. That's what happened when I was a kid. I remember in the 60s. Wow, brother, you're old. Anyway, you know, my, my tios would sleep over. My tias, my cousins, my, you name it. They would sleep over the house. Wow, you must have had a big house. No, we put out, you know, some, uh, some cobija, some uh, blankets there. And, you know, wow. This... My grandmother would, you know, when it was late and everybody was talking, all the, all right, turn off the lights, I'm going to bed. <laughs> my, my grandmother said that. And as they went down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Hey, look who was the host making the meal. Have you ever had anybody, hey, stay with us tonight? And then the, the host, well, if it was my mother or my, yeah, they, they went in the kitchen and started cooking before I even got up. And, and uh, mijo, here's, you know. But G, the whole, here's Jesus making food for them. Isn't it wonderful that we can, you know, have a, eat together. We had picnic. Uh, are you sure this is the, the church? Because usually churches don't have fun like that out there in parks and at, and fellowship halls, and they, they don't smile, they don't... Uh, what, what church have you been to? Oh yeah, I know some churches where some people in the church look like they just had five glasses of, lim of lemon, right? Juice. They come to church like this. What? You, know, like, <laughs> you don't know anybody? Don't turn to the person right now. Okay, don't, no, no. Don't, no, 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 no. Husband's wife, don't do that. Suddenly their eyes, verse 31, were opened, and they recognized them. Right there they were eating... They saw the, the scars. Uh, hey, hey, it's Jesus. You know, oh my goodness. The Lord let him now see who he was. And at that moment, he disappeared. Bye. Resurrected body, I ate. It was a real body. It wasn't, uh, you know, something that the, you know, these other groups were saying. The Sadducees said, you know, the, no, no, you know, not, he didn't have a real body, you know, and he did. He ate. He ate food, chile, who knows, you know. <laughs> and verse 32, and they, and they said, didn't our hearts burn, verse 32, burn within us as he talked with us on the road. On the road. I love that. Their hearts were on fire. Their hearts were burning. And he explained the scriptures to them. See, that's what happens when you study God's word. Some of you just get enough on Sunday morning one hour or 30 minutes or 40 minutes of preaching. Okay, I got my fill. Okay, bye, see you, pastor, next week. <laughs> You're starving to death. <laughs> you don't have enough sufficient intake of God's word. You're not healthy. You're not 
you need that nutrition if you're going from Sunday to Sunday. And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. They were going from Jerusalem to a mouse. Now they're, they're on fire. They're going from a mouse to Jerusalem. You know, where Jesus, you know, was crucified and rose from the dead. Amen. Why? Well, because they were on fire. And they found the 11 disciples and others who were gathered. And they said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared also to Peter. Another evidence to 500. I mean, you could just go on. Jesus was alive. And I want to end this morning. You say, oh, it's over and now the sermon. Okay, okay, with these three points right here in this passage, we see how the Lord transforms us into the image of Pastor Oscar. No, no, no. Of who are, am I trying to be like? Who should I be transforming into the image of who? Of Jesus. We need to look like Jesus. I remember in preaching, when I was in preaching homiletics, you know, uh, uh, one of the teachers, you know, he preached like this. You know, or he taught, the, taught us, they're the preachers. You know, back when I was 18, 19, and, you know, he taught us like that in the preaching class. And, and I would always think, you know, when people went out up from the university to preach, all the preachers went out, they would probably were preaching like that too, you know. Hey, and I'm preaching. <laughs> Why? Because they were imitating the teacher. If you imitate me, you should imitate me because I'm imitating Jesus. Not because you're imitating Oscar Sanchez. Who are you trying to be? Like Billy Graham? D.L. Moody? No. no, I'm not trying to imitate any preacher. This is my style. This is when I feel comfortable because I get excited about the Word of God. I'm like Peter and John who said, we can't help but speak the Word of God in power. Amen? Even when they had a, a spear up to their, you know, we can't help but, but talk. We can't help but preach about Jesus. But look, we're about to kill you. Doesn't matter. We can't help it. it there's just an abundance, what, of God's Word in our heart. That it, it, There's an overflow. Where does it tell you that in the Word of God? For you that want the verses... Right here in Matthew 12, 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in here will come out of the mouth. That wasn't Freudian slip. Remember Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, said, oh, when the person says, I want it, that's the, that's the truth right there. No, I, no not that. I, I, he changes. Um, the Word of God says here, what comes from the heart that's why sometimes I just listen to people. Why? Because you got a degree in psychology, uh, therapist. With, no, no, no. Um, I just listen to them because eventually they're going to tell me the truth of what they say with their words. Wow. Because it's in their heart. It starts in the heart. And here I have, you know, some things to share with you. First of all, Jesus transforms disciples' minds. Write it down in, in the blank there because I don't want you later after the service looking brother number two was what Jesus transformed the disciples hearts he transformed their minds and then that flew to what transforming of the heart and where did that go they transformed their lives minds hearts lives there's a sermon amen that's it we're done no <laughs> you know we are becoming like Jesus I want to be like Jesus. Why? Because you want them to see Oscar Sanchez? No, I want them to see Jesus in me. I'm plan A for God. Plan A? Yeah, plan A is that people would see Jesus in you, be drawn to Jesus, and then give their hearts and lives to Jesus. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, like Some people you know, uh, sing like angels at church, but they live like devils. At, during the week. Do I hear an amen? You know, there's not, there's no correlation. There's no, you know, it just doesn't align. Their, 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 their talk doesn't go with their walk. What they, you know, they're good at talking, but what about the life? I'd rather hear your, you know, a, 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 see the sermon than hear a thousand sermons. I'd rather see somebody that's living for Christ. 
You know, he transformed their minds. And, and we need help in the church. What, we're all going to become psychologists? No, we, no we, we need to care for people, you know, help people with the word of God. I give you permission. All everyone, everyone here is a graduate from the University of the Bible to go out and share the word of God and help people through the word of God to help with their anxiety, to help with their depression, to help with their discouragement, to help with... Uh, they don't have to go to... You. If the church would start doing that, we might have more healthy, emotionally, uh, emotional people in our churches. Because emotionally, we, we are hurting. And, I, and the Lord loves for us to ask Him. Ask Him about the truth, about our needs. Lord, I'm having trouble with, with anxiety. I'm having trouble with, you know, I feel discouraged, Lord. It's okay. Our pastor never talks about, he, you know what, he's perfect. <laughs> I'm glad once in a while I'm not transparent here. I never said I was perfect. I heard an amen somewhere. You know, but <laughs> I'm not. No one is. It's not perfection the Lord looks at. It's what the direction of my life that the Lord looks at, as one of my favorite preachers from Southern California says. Not direction, but perfection. Oh, I don't have to be perfect. No. <laughs> but are you, are you trying to please God through your life? Do you want to bring glory, honor to the Lord through your life? Colossians 3.10, according to what? The image of the one who created him. We are becoming like Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.18, and being transformed into the same image to be like Christ from glory to glory as from the Lord, the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, see, is molding me to become like Jesus. The Holy Spirit. You think that it was by accident that I went through this life-threatening disease that I've been going through this year? No, the Lord knew. And yes, he could perform a miracle like, or he could do what he is sovereign. He, he controls everything. He is providence. He is orchestrating. Not like the, in the Oz, uh, the Wizard of Oz, the person controlling the, you know, well, yes, the, the Lord orchestrates things in life. Uses evil uh, kings or whatever. Because he, he, he's got the last word. He created the world. Shouldn't he have a say-so? Oh, I guess so. You know, <laughs> yeah, he should have a say so. Our minds, Lord wants to penetrate with what? With the Word of God. Get healthy with the Word of God. Through the Word of God, this will bring health to your to your life. Be saturated by the Word of God. Some people are, should be overflowing with the Word of God. We should be. And then with our hearts, the seat of the emotions, the seat of you know, uh, the personality there. You know, right there is what is, is our heart. The Lord wants your heart more than your talk. Israel was waiting for a, a Messiah that would come with an army, physical army, and the Lord, what? Came redemption. He saved us in a spiritual sense. He died for us. He took our place on, on the cross. He took my sins. I didn't deserve to go to heaven. But Jesus took my sins and I came before him and said, Lord, I'm not worthy to go to heaven. He goes, I know, but I want you to go. And now that you put your faith, your trust in me, you're going. You're going. You're guaranteed heaven. What? 1 John 5, 12, 13. He that has the Son, where? Up here. You know, no, no, in your heart has eternal life. He that doesn't have Jesus in his heart does not have eternal life. Do I have to go to seminary for three years? Learn Hebrew, Greek? No. Do I have to go to, to university four years to, to get my degree to know that? No. It's, it's plain. He transforms our lives there. What happened when, when they, their eyes were open? They saw God. They saw Jesus. They saw the nail pierced hands. They said, oh, it's Jesus. He's here with us. And 
and what happened to them. Their lives were transformed. They didn't just sit back and say, okay, that's it. You know, like, no, no, when Jesus gets a hold of your heart, you're burning in your heart. There's fire in your heart. They went back to Jerusalem. They were on fire. You know, the, how many times does the Lord tell us, share your faith, share your faith, open your mouth. And tell other people there's good news that, that they can go to heaven and it's guaranteed. And it's guaranteed 100%. They're going to think I'm crazy. Well, that's what the Bible says. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1.13. You got the ticket to, to, to heaven. When you get up there, God's going to say, why should I let you into my kingdom? My son, you're going to say, because I, I believed in Christ. I repented of my sins. Here am I. Yeah, that's true. Come on in. I didn't get into Argentina when I was a missionary until what? Until they stamped my passport. Everywhere I went, it seemed like they were just, you know, I was a missionary and boom, they stamped my passport. Boom, they stamped my, I go, how many times do I have to get my passport? I'm not going to criticize the country or anything, but, you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, I'm glad that once I gave my heart to Christ, he stamped me, Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1.13, you were you were sealed by the Holy Spirit, stamped by the Holy Spirit, that you were saved, and now that's it. I don't have to continue to invite Christ in my heart. Come in, Lord. Come in, Lord. You go, I am in. Wondering, you know, <laughs> Read the Word of God is, I think, what we need to do. Read the Word of God for His glory. There should be joy. There should be gladness. There should be happiness. You know, I'm glad for a praise team, but they shouldn't be like cheerleaders for us to what to sing. They help us. They direct us. They lead us. But I should be coming already with an overflow of joy, an overflow of gladness, an overflow of happiness. Not to one that I put together here for one holy hour on Sunday. It should be overflowing uh, in my life. It should be overflowing for His honor. For his glory. I don't want the Lord one day to say, Oscar, remember you were on that bus? Oscar, remember you were at work? Remember, you know, you never told your companions about me. Why? Why? I'll never forget that story of two ladies that, um, you know, realized that they were Christians. And, uh, you know, uh, after, I, I don't know, you know, 10 years, whatever, and and they realized that because they were seated together in a bus in downtown of the city. And they started talking. They were, oh, you're a Christian. I'm a Christian too. Oh, okay. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and they say, well, where did you come to know Christ? And, you know, and then they say, where do you work? And they said, I, you work at that, you work at that uh, place. that I work there. I work on the first floor. You work on the seventh floor. I go, I never knew that. Yeah, I've been working there for, you know, almost 10 years. Me too. <laughs> never working. Maybe if they would have shared the good news of Christ, maybe a little track. Just leave it there. I, I sometimes leave a track. I just tell people, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. Here, the homeless. You know, I tried to, you know, there was a young homeless guy right there. Hey, here, here's the, the word of God and and I don't want to be, you know, like James says, you, you say, God, go in peace. And I gave him a little bit something to eat, right? You just can't say, God bless you. And show him. Buy him food. Give him something. And then go on your way. There's people all around us that need Jesus. Let's stand. I want to ask you to stand with me. There's a lot of people that need Jesus. What has Jesus told you today about being on fire? That's why we come together as a church. I come here to get fired up. How about you? You know what? The sadness, the sad part of, uh, of, of being a pastor sometimes and even being a, is to see that, you know, when I go to football games, baseball games, basketball games, soccer, I see people yelling. I people see people shouting. I see people jumping up and down. I see people, you know. And when I come to church, I don't see people with joy. I don't see people with fire in the pastor. I shared this week with four people about Jesus and his love.
Lord, one day is going to say, Oscar, you had the word of God all the time. How come you didn't do what I said? Well, I don't know, Lord. <laughs> Doesn't it say to go and share the word of God? How many times? Does it say, share, 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 share. And yet we don't do it. No wonder Billy Graham said, 90% of the people that come forward didn't make a true decision for me. You know, for, uh, you know, Billy Graham used to say that. Hundreds, thousands would come forward. Remember his crusades? He said, 90% don't make a real decision. It goes later on when we counsel them and said, did you understand the decision you made? You understand what, what you just did? You, did you repent? Did you, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm not the judge of your soul, neither your heart, only he is. Amen? And if that thief on the cross was given the, 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 the ticket to heaven by Jesus because he repented, they went, come on, you're the Jesus, get us down from here. And then one of them had a change of heart. He repented. He had faith and said, no, this is, this is the Son of God. This is you. He believed. He trusted. And when he told him, Jesus, remember me when you get to paradise, heaven, Jesus turned around and said, today you will be with me in heaven. Wait a minute. It's not fair. He didn't go to church. He didn't get baptized. He didn't work. He didn't serve God for 40, 50. <laughs> Who's the one that could give us the entrance to heaven? The Lord. For him, it was, you know, the first shall be last, the last first. Are you sure you know Jesus? Are you sure you're sealed? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for, Lord, uh, that the power is in the word of God. It, it, many people read books. This book reads our soul, reads our hearts, reads our minds. It is piercing like a sharp sword, penetrating. It could bring healing, salvation to the soul, to the heart, to the mind, to the life of that individual. Father, help us to be a, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, while we're still here, Father. Help us to invest in the bank of heaven, that when we get there, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you will give us those crowns of faithfulness which we will in turn lay at your, at your feet, Father. Casting crowns at your feet, Father, for your honor and your glory. Because life is not about us. Life is about Jesus and eternity. I pray that if someone here doesn't know you, Lord, that today they would get saved. If that thief on the cross, that robber on the cross, was able to find salvation right there instantly, then you can also receive the salvation of Christ this morning. Repent of your sins, which means a ch uh, changing of the mind, saying, okay, now I agree with the Lord. I made a U-turn towards the Lord now. I was going away from God. Now I'm going towards God. And that's repentance, a change of mind, a change of heart. And now say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. Save my soul. Save my heart. Right now. Right now. Come in to live within me. Give me eternal life. And then if you're a believer, I want to challenge you. Who will you share your faith? I put some, some flyers out there at the entrance of the church here. Somebody will give somebody a flyer to invite him to come to church. Or I carry with me some tracks. When I, when I go out in, in, every morning, I, I try to it, tell somebody about Jesus every morning, every, mo every day. And I take just someone, Lord, today I would talk to them about the good news. Could I do that in 365 years? Excuse me, 365 days? I said 65 years, now I'm not going to live that long. But 365 days? Can I at least 10 days out of that year tell someone about Jesus. Help me to do that. That's more than I've done in the last 10 years. For your honor and your glory. And because I cannot help but tell people about Jesus. There's fire in my heart. The word of God and Jesus. Set my soul afire. Set it afire, Lord. For your honor and your glory. And lead us from this place. 
in power, in victory, in glory for your name and your sake, with uncomparable, Lord, joy, that it would just, people would see that in me and say, I want what you have. Tell me about it. And Jesus, lead us from this place in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. God bless you. We are all dismissed now. God bless you. Go forward.